Now, there's one thing about the sequel trilogy that's always going to carry with us, no matter how much we try to forget about them, we're always going to recognize those films as the very flawed movies that Disney really pushed upon us and really were directed and written by creators that really didn't know how to handle the franchise. People out there like J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson, as well as co-writer Chris Terrio of The Rise of Skywalker, but it wasn't really all on them in the long run. A lot of it did also have to do with Kathy Kennedy and even Bob Iger at the time as the Disney CEO. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. And let's dive right into exactly what's happening. Now, we know that Bob Iger is really desperately trying to preserve his image and how he represents Disney as a company. And he's been becoming a lot more direct with people associated or fans associated with things like Star Wars, Marvel, Indiana Jones, and just Disney properties in general. Now we know that going in, Bob Iger is really in a constant shakeup right now between himself and the higher ups over at Disney. It's not looking good, at least for him it's not, and it's really like a rat race, right? It really is a race between whether or not Bob Iger is going to get fired by 2024 or if he's going to get the chance to willingly step down as CEO and to get a replacement as if it's his decision. So moving over to what he had to say about killing off an iconic hero like Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi is similar to what he did a couple of weeks ago. So let's tap right into this now. With Disney CEO Bob Iger recently becoming more direct with both Star Wars and indie fans suddenly to save his image, he recently apologized yet again about the mishandling of Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi by delivering the following to fans. Looking back at how we handled those sequel films, it's worth mentioning now at this time that we played things too safely with the first film. With a major property like Star Wars we felt that was necessary and going into the second film, we knew we needed to do things differently. We needed some kind of shock value for that film and both Kathy and Ryan felt the demise of an iconic hero like Luke was the icing of the cake to make that shock value apparent for the audience. We realized today it didn't work the way that we originally intended and do very much apologize for how that was handled and I specifically am sorry to any fans of the community that took offense to that decision. It's not something you want to intentionally do by disappointing millions of individuals that grew grew up with these franchises and take it so personally, which is understandable. Now guys, let me pause here quick because there's more that he talks about in just a second, but before I move on to that, let me just say one thing about this. I've always pointed this out, people that do apologize and have done so before, like Kathleen Kennedy and Bob Iger and even Bob Chapek at times, I don't really view that as genuine. I really do believe that this is an effective tool for them to kind of improve their overall image, how they represent companies, how they represent these movies and stuff like that. And so Bob Iger really is the shining example of that. He really is the definition, I believe, of someone that is either being disingenuous or somebody that's trying, trying to create a fake apology or someone that's trying to really boost how you know uh, well they are received as an individual or as an icon. And so Bob Iger, I think, is one of those. I don't believe it's genuine. I think that this is all a part of the plan about damage control for Indy 5, the Dial of Destiny. I always say this, why not apologize years ago? At least, at the very least, right? One year after the release of Episode 8. But nope. It wasn't until now that he actually said this. So moving on forward, all right, it gets a little bit more involved and a little bit more apparent that he's not meaning what he says here. So let's dive into this further. He goes on to unveil, but we here at Disney realize perhaps things could have been handled far differently if we didn't just rush into the second film so fast for the sequels. 
We always had that thought like, what if we are starting things up too soon? But Kathy felt it was time to start production quickly just after Force Awakens and to do something of suspense with Luke. Ryan felt by ending the life of an iconic hero, that memory and decision of his would stick around with fans' minds forever and would be quite memorable for his movie. Perhaps the artistic view of that was a flawed one. We are working to do better with Star Wars and Marvel and ask our audiences to remain patient as we right-size our projects moving onwards. We are thankful to have creators like John and Dave, as well as Tony, giving us new creative directions in the meantime. Now, by the way, guys, when he says Tony, he's talking about Tony Gilroy with the Andor series. Uh, I've noticed that the Andor show, there's a split. There's a lot of fans that love it. There's also a lot of fans that really despise that show, calling it, you know, and bore, stuff like that, because it's boring. Uh, people have different views, and hey, that's understandable, right? So, look, here's what I have to say also about Bob Iger. He did the same exact thing with Elemental. He did the same exact thing with the closing of, or the uh, up, and, up and coming closing, I should say, of the Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel. It's never a true actual apology. It's more on the lines of, let me just say and spew out some words to boost up my image and to look more personable. That's how Bob Iger comes across as. He's always been that, you know, monotone talking guy, you know, really just giving the fans what they want to, you know, actually see on the screen or actually at home on Disney Plus. And sometimes, many times, it just doesn't really work. You know, the Kenobi series, I think, was another prime example of that. It's like, hey, you know, here we have Ewan McGregor back. Ten years after the events of Episode 3, you're gonna love this. But in the end, it's all about kind of shifting canon and breaking the canon of, of, of Order 66 and stuff like that. So, it just goes to show you that the lore is never handled correctly by Kathy Kennedy and even those over at Disney. Are they starting to get that message? Absolutely. Will they take that message message into account? Well, that's all heavily now reliant on people out there like Favreau and Filoni. And again, Ahsoka, come August 26th, is going to be the make or break of the Star Wars franchise. I've said this several times. If that show really can't lift up fan spirits, I don't know what will. And especially if it's done by John and Dave. So they have to make sure that they remain on their A-game to really make that possible. And that's a lot of weight to carry, let me be honest. So yeah, Bob Iger, you should have never allowed a person like Ryan Johnson, of all people, a independent filmmaker at the time who really only had one major movie like Looper, coming on board of the Star Wars universe. I believe even one of the big Hollywood filmmakers out there uh, really called out Ryan Johnson. I forgot who it was. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was, I forgot his name, if you guys could recall. There was a Hollywood writer that did call out Ryan Johnson about how Disney was so, um, you know, irresponsible for hiring somebody that's so untalented uh, and really risking tens of hundreds of millions of dollars, whatever have you. Uh, but anyways, guys, I would love to hear your take on all this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. And I will catch you guys next time.